Hi everyone and welcome to another Wise Money Tools video or podcast, however you connect with us. You know, as I mentioned in my last video, it's not that I really love talking about politics. In fact, I'd rather not. But I'm constantly finding that politicians are forcing us to talk about the economics of the proposals they're putting on the table. As much as I'd like to stay away from it, some of the devastating effects that these policies can have on our economy could be significant and will definitely affect you. There's plenty of social issues that we don't need to deal with here. However, we probably should at least deal with some of the economic ones. Now, with that said, one thing we're hearing a lot about is that the um, rich need to be paying their fair share in taxes. In other words, paying more in taxes, and in particular, corporations. They count on the hope that by creating enemies between rich and poor, that the masses are going to turn against the rich and vote for these politicians. The front runners right now have even claimed socialism as a fair and guiding principle. Part of socialism is counting on the animosity between classes, creating enemies, dividing us, with the hope it's going to propel these guys into the White House. The big push by uh, Bernie Sanders right now is that corporations don't pay enough in taxes, and some pay no tax at all. His hope is to turn our anger towards these corporations. For many who don't understand how money, taxes, and economics affect them, it's maybe working. There are articles written, reporters whining, and politicians crying about the fact that corporations got a huge tax break recently with the tax cuts from last year. What everyone should be doing is cheering, well, except the politicians who want to control every aspect of our lives. They have this insatiable appetite to tax and spend, and it's just not good for us, but it's good for them. Again, the rest of us should be cheering. Let me tell you why. They want you to think that the corporate tax cut was at the expense of the poor and the middle class, but we can't let them fool us. Wherever there is a corporate tax cut, unemployment goes down. In other words, people get hired, wages go up, the economy expands. We're, we're seeing record numbers right now in all those areas since the, the 50s. Okay. So that's all good and well, but that's not really what I wanted to talk about, okay? The point that I wanted to make in this video is to tell you this. No corporation in America pays taxes. What, you say? <laughs> but corporations do pay taxes all the time. You can see it in their 10K, in their balance sheets and income statements. You can see it on their annual report. And I'd say yes. They write the check for taxes for sure. But guess who paid those taxes for them? You did. I did. Anyone who bought a product from them or used their service, they paid the tax for that corporation. You see, it's embedded in the cost of the product or service that we buy. It's really that simple. Corporations factor in the tax bill that they're going to need to pay with each and every item, product, or service that they sell. Now, when you think about the reality of who pays taxes, what would happen if higher tax rates were imposed on these corporations? Well, you got it. The product and service would increase in price as well. You can't raise corporate taxes in a vacuum as if they will be glad to pay the extra tax out of their savings account at the end of the day. Corporations have an obligation to be profitable to their, to their shareholders. That is their primary purpose. Taxes are built in as part of the equation to price a good or a service. So when a corporation such as Apple gets a tax break, what do they do? Well, typically they grow and expand and hire more. Many corporations, because of the high tax rates, keep money in other countries. That does not help our country and we should want to have corporations and employment here. The corporations would prefer to be here too, but regulation and taxation is burdensome compared to other countries. And again, the main obligation of a corporation is to produce a profit. So here's an interesting quote. I mean, this quote came from an article that was written. It was a very negative, 
negatively written article regarding Apple's tax bill for 2018. And again, this was written as if it was a bad thing. It said, the tech giant just announced that it will pay $38 billion to the U.S. Treasury in taxes brought home from overseas and create some 20,000 new jobs. It also pledged to invest $350 billion in the United States over the next five years and give employees $2,500 in restricted stock units. So the trade-off for Apple paying less in taxes and bringing that money back to the U.S. was 20,000 new jobs and an investment of $350 billion and some stock incentive for employees. That sounds like great news. Let's grow and expand and employ more here in our country. What the politicians such as Bernie and AOC suggest is that this is a ripoff. I say to whom? The government? Because they only got $38 billion out of the deal? That's not fair. See, the government has this all wrong. Somehow, along the way, they think that we all work for them, and it's because of their generosity and benevolence that we get to take home any money at all. It's completely backwards. It's our money, and we pay the government to build infrastructure, to protect us, and to make laws to keep us free. That's it. Now politicians seem to think they are an arbiter of wealth, whereas they have the right to seize the property of one billionaire and give it to another or just wastefully spend it. Now, one last thing for this bit video. Government already double taxes corporate earnings as it is. Did you know that large profitable corporations, after they've filed and paid taxes, oftentimes then distribute what's called a dividend? A dividend is profit from the company paid to its shareholders. If you're a shareholder and you've received a dividend in the past, you know that that dividend is then taxed to you at your ordinary income tax rates. There's not a break on dividends. You get taxed as if you earn the money at your tax rate. This is effect, in effect a double taxation on the same dollar. The corporation paid tax on it, then you get to pay tax on it as well. Seems the government has a sweet deal. They get like 50 cents on the dollar of all the earnings of the corporation and the dividend paid to you. And now they want more. There's a good chance that you and I are going to be a victim of this double taxation. If you have a 401k, mutual funds, an IRA invested in mutual funds, stocks, chances are, there, chances are pretty good that you own some of the companies that pay dividends. Apple, Walmart, Amazon, Netflix, Google, all these companies. These companies are in many portfolios throughout the financial world. You may be the beneficiary of Apple having to pay less tax and bringing the money into the states and growing or buying other businesses. This will definitely reflect in their profit, their earnings, and eventually the stock price of the company, which translates into your wealth if you own those types of um, securities that has Apple involved. You don't have to be a rich millionaire or billionaire to benefit from lower tax rates. Like I said, you probably own these companies in your retirement plan. You may not even know it. Apple has 867 million shares outstanding. Walmart has 2.9 billion shares outstanding. Amazon has 491 million shares. Some of it may be owned by you, either directly or indirectly. So to finish up, let me emphasize once again, corporations don't pay taxes. We all pay the corporation's tax through the cost of the products we buy from them. If tax rates escalate, it will translate into either higher cost, lower employment, or an inferior, cheaper version of the product you love. There's no way around it. Corporations are nothing more than a conduit between what they make and what we want, and they must price it accordingly. To do so, they have to account for the cost to bring it to us, and that includes taxes. We think these corporations are dirty, rotten, filthy, greedy mobsters robbing us blind. If you hate the fact that Jeff Bezos is a billionaire, well, then quit buying from Amazon. If you hate that, the, that Sam Walton's kids are all billionaires, well, quit going to Walmart and go pay higher prices elsewhere. 
If you think Apple or Samsung are ripping you off because they pay less taxes, then again, quit buying their phones. As I said in other videos, you get to vote with your dollars. No one is forcing you or me to make any of these corporations richer. The current political class can't seem to grasp and understand this very basic principle of how economics work. We demonize these corporations for being profitable and paying less tax than they used to just a few short years ago. So I say, if we're not happy about that, then quit buying their stuff. You and I can see the result when we take burdensome regulations and taxes off the table for everyone. We get a booming economy, lowest unemployment in decades, higher wages, which means more stability for families. Families are even able to buy homes in record numbers right now. They have more money to save and invest and to build their wealth. And again, you get to vote with your money what companies you're going to support. Let's keep these politicians out of the economy because it's obvious they have no clue how to build a business and make it profitable for everyone. Okay, that's my little rant for the today, and thank you for watching this video. Sorry if we get just a maybe a tad too political, but they're making us talk about this stuff because everything they do economically affects you, your money, and your wealth. Well, as always, if you have any questions, send them to questions at wisemoneytools.com. Make sure you subscribe. Don't miss a video. Don't miss a podcast. And until next time, take care.